So this is a paper entitled Taxpayer Responses to Greater Progressivity, Evidence from Personal Income Tax Reform in Uganda. This is joint work with um, uh, uh, two of my wider colleagues, um, uh, Pia Rattenhuber and Maria Jouste, and then um, uh, uh, two um, colleagues from Uganda Revenue Authority, um, Tina Kaidu and Joseph Okello. So this is a little bit different paper than the, than the three previous ones, but it does have an in, uh, a link also to inequality, at least towards the very end. So uh, let me start off with some uh, motivation. So um, actually when you look at the uh, personal income tax rates in sub-Saharan Africa, they are low. So here is information from a recent um, uh, 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 study by uh, McNabb and Granger. Uh, what it shows is the um, average top so the highest marginal tax rate uh, in, uh, um, in, in sub-Saharan African countries versus then uh, uh, the same thing in the OECD countries, uh, either be, uh, with, with or without social security contributions. And, and the, uh, without the social security contributions, the average top uh, uh, personal income tax rate in Africa is, um, uh, is below 35% or, or so, which is way high, lower than uh, uh, people in developed countries uh, face. Uh, whereas, of course, we know already from these papers that income inequality is, uh, is at a very high level uh, and there's very little redistribution taking place by the state. So, I don't know, I mean, these numbers are probably not visible to you and, and Uganda, unfortunately, is not, not included, but it's very similar. Um, um, so, um, this shows from a study by Oliver Bargain and co-authors um, how much the state or the, or the government uh, redistributes income by, via the whole tax and transfer system. And, and the numbers are very minimal for countries like Zambia, Ghana, Ethiopia and Tanzania, so that the difference between the disposable income and the market income is minimal. So if you take these two things together, the question is would it make sense to raise these low co uh, personal income tax rates in sub-Saharan African countries? Uh, in order to understand uh, if this is a good idea, uh, we can go back to all the way to, um, uh, to the optimal tax analysis by, initiated by Jim Merlis. And, and what it says is really that the socially desirable tax rate, uh, other things equal, is relatively high if inequality is the high level or uh, uh, and, and the society's inequality aversion uh, is, is strong. And on the other hand, the, the top tax rate in, uh, should be relatively low if the taxation uh, reduces the tax base to a large extent. So this is measured by then the response of the tax base to changes in, in, in marginal tax rates. So the key uh, is, is measure this responsiveness. And that's what we are now aiming to do in this paper for Uganda. And notice that there's very little evidence on how uh, uh, income tax changes influence uh, the tax base in uh, developing economies, especially in the, at, the, at the lower end of the distribution. So what do we do in this paper? Um, so we um, examine the elasticity of taxable earned income um, uh, on the basis of a policy reform that took place during the fiscal year 2012-2013 in Uganda using the same data that Marcus is using. Uh, and the, um, the, uh, the reform changed many things, uh, but we are focusing on the top. And, and at the top, um, which pertains to the top 1% of income earners, the, the highest marginal tax rate increased from 30 to 40%. So that's a relatively sizable increase. So we look at the impacts of the reform on, 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 on the reported revenues and then also on inequality. Uh, taking into account, of course, in the inequality analysis, the behavioral reactions that, the, uh, that um, uh, stem from this reform. So what um, the reform did uh, was that the, uh, the tax bracket um, had been kept uh, the same, fixed uh, for many years, so bracket creep, um, inflation being higher than changes which were, uh, which were, which were minimal uh, to, the, uh, to the bracket threshold levels was a phenomenon and the government wanted to alleviate the tax burden for lower middle income uh, people and, and then recoup part of the revenue by increasing the tax rate at the top. 
and, and, the, and, and the new top tax rate was introduced on persons earning more than 10 million uh, Uganda shilling a month. And, and this is very close to the, uh, 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 in the, in the administrative data uh, to the top one person. So for the whole population, it's even a, a smaller group. Uh, so here's what the, what, 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 uh, what the reform did. So uh, what we have here is that the marginal tax rate pre-reform is the yellow one, and then the marginal tax rate post-reform is this uh, uh, light gray one, and, and, and it, it basically pushed the brackets uh, to, the, uh, to the right. Uh, so we have done the analysis also for the other groups, but really in this presentation we are focusing on, on the top. So we are comparing uh, those who were affected by the higher marginal tax rate at the top to a control group, which is just below, uh, which, is, uh, which corresponds to the, uh, to the next 9% in the income distribution in the admin data who didn't have any change in their marginal income tax rate, they have a slight reduction in the average tax rates because the, the ta marginal tax rates at the lower end were, were adjusted, but it was very small when you, when you, when you move towards the, um, uh, towards the bracket uh, threshold level. All right, so the data um, set is the same. So it's the universe of the admin tax data from URA, monthly pay you earn re returns. We also look at the same for the, for the, um, for the business holders who, who, who don't have corporations who, who pay the personal income tax rate, but they were so few affected by the reform that it didn't make, didn't make any, 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 any difference to the analysis. So this covers now wage earners. Uh, we, we focus on uh, three years after the reform, and that's when, we, when our start data set starts, so we have only two years, years uh, pre before the reform. And as already Marcus said, um, um, although employers have a tax identification number, the individuals necessarily don't have, so this is a, it's a, in a sense a cross-sectional analysis, uh, which, by the way, isn't, isn't necessarily a, a bad thing, according to Emmanuel Sayer's surveys, a survey on an elasticity of taxable income research. He actually says that the, the benefits of the, of the panel data um, uh, are are not clear when it comes to taxable income elasticity analysis because of things related to mean reversion, etc. So he in fact favors using cross-sectional analysis. So we are, we, are, we, are, we are following that approach. We do some sample uh, uh, adjustments uh, to, uh, so to rule out persons who were not affected by this reform. Uh, so basically, as you can guess, this is a difference in difference approach uh, following the elasticity of taxable income or the ETI literature for short. Uh, so we have these pre-reform years and then um, uh, it's quite customary to look at uh, 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 three years after the reform in the literature. Uh, here, um, in bold, the treatment group that we have in this presentation is at the top uh, ten, uh, one percent taxpayers, uh, and the control group are those who were who were uh, uh, right be below, and 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 uh, uh, roughly speaking, they are then uh, the rest in the top ten percent the admin data. Uh, so when the outcome variable is log reported. Uh, taxable income, then uh, the uh, elasticity of taxable income, uh, uh, the elasticity can be, can be uh, uh, derived by, by, by just dividing the, different, the, the uh, difference in difference estimate by the relative change in the one minus the marginal tax rate. So the, uh, the, in, in a sense to the, the, the keeping keep rate of the, uh, which was affected now by this reform. Uh, so here's uh, normalized developments uh, of the log mean incomes for these two groups. The treated one is the dashed line with the confidence bands, and then the uh, control group is the, um, uh, is, is, the uh, 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 is, is the line here. And what you can see here is that the, after the reform, uh, there, there seems to be some action so that the, uh, the, the, that the incomes of those who were now subject to this uh, 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 higher tax rate clearly declined after the reform. 
uh, when you do the same in a regression framework, this is the diff in diff estimate, um, and, and, and um, uh, here we report four different um, uh, versions. So we first have a simple diff in diff uh, in the first column, then the second one is weighted by incomes because that's what people typically do in the taxable income elasticity if there's any heterogeneity in the estimate, this would be then the correct one. Uh, uh, but then we are worried that there the, the happen to be certain very high incomes before the reform. So what we are doing, we are, we are leaving out the, uh, one percent of the top one percent of incomes when we were saying that they, these would be then the, uh, uh, the outliers and if we drop those uh, then uh, the elasticity and, or the point estimate and the corresponding elasticity which we also report here drop quite significantly. So in a sense um, what we have uh, in, as, as our preferred um, elasticity estimate is here which is at the ballpark of 0.5 and for reported labor earnings, that's way higher than people for developed countries typically estimate. So they hover around 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 or so. Uh, so the summary of the results, so that was what I showed you uh, was for a balanced sample of employers, uh, the elasticities <laughs> My chair forgot to uh, <laughs> keep yes, the big yes. <laughs> So I'm benefiting. You have, hopefully, you are not suffering too much. <laughs> uh, elasticity is increased if all taxpayers are used. So um, uh, elasticities are higher among, uh, among the upper half of the treated group. Uh, the basic salary less response less than the, uh, than the other income units. Uh, uh, and um, there's also suggestive evidence of income shifting taking place because the firms for whom the, uh, 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 the, uh, the taxable income for top, top earners uh, reduced uh, the most also report a greater increase in dividend income after the reform. So it could have been that part of the drop in the labor earnings was then uh, compensated by higher dividend income. So what are the revenue implications of this? So, uh, so obviously there's the mechanical increase on the, on the revenues from the top group because the tax rate went up, but we are worried that the behavioral response eats away ooh, something about the, um, about the uh, 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 response, but according to our calculations, even if you take into account the behavioral response, then uh, this increase, uh, the mechanical increase dominates, so it increased revenue. And what we can also do, we can calculate the revenue maximizing top tax rate, uh, and, and there's the well-known uh, SIES et al. formula, and according to it, with the Ugandan parameter values, uh, the revenue maximizing tax rate would be around 55%, and the current one now, including consumption taxes, is, is around 50 So that meant that the, re that the reform didn't increase the, uh, the tax rate above the revenue maximizing one, which is not necessarily the optimal, because the government may also care about this top earner's welfare, but if it doesn't, then the revenue maximizing would be the, uh, the highest that you would, you would get. And and finally, uh, the, what are the implications uh, for inequality? So here we have an, uh, numbers um, uh, for, the, uh, for the inequality in the whole data set before the reform and after the reform, assuming now that there, that there hadn't been any behavioral changes, and then the actual after the reform. And of course, now when the top incomes decline, then the, 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 the behavioral response further reinforces uh, the, the, uh, the decline in, in, in income inequality following the reform. So here's the summary. Uh, we uh, studied the uh, personal income tax reform in Uganda using the different diff approach. Our preferred elasticity is, is around 0.5. It's certainly greater than for developed economies and we simulate the revenue and inequality impacts and the, and the behavioral responses either way some of the revenue impacts uh, but they've uh, reinforced the inequality reduction and that's it thank you, thank you.